Dear listeners, some of you have already been listening to Fighters Brew from our Patreon or Substack. Those of you who have will know Alexander Buckner. Not only did he contribute to the voice performances, but gave me feedback on my scripts. He's been a contributor and collaborator for Southpaw for years under various aliases from Alex Buckner, your boy Lex, Hannibal Lennon Buckman, Avon Marksdale, R.N. Alday, Alex D. Zander, and I made this to stand. He's like pro wrestler Mick Foley with all the various gimmicks. And like Mick, Alex is also a Hall of Famer, but for Southpaw. Whenever I reference the Southpaw Project, you'll always hear me say we or us. Alex was part of that we and us. He is Southpaw. Even with liberation martial arts, he left an indelible footprint. I talk to Alex every day. He was one of my best friends. But sometime after my last conversation with him, he passed away in his sleep. Everyone, his family most of all, was devastated. Knowing Alex improved so many of our lives. He was our support system. And we got so used to that, we sometimes didn't even notice. You just got so used to him checking in on you. I and everyone he has touched will miss him. Alex was an artist, performer, writer, dungeon master, martial artist, friend, brother, uncle, and son. But even though Alex is gone, I have hours of Alex recordings for Fighters Group. We even had several conversations about potential projects after Fighters Brew. I still have those chats. I still have those recordings, almost all of which his close friends and family have never heard. Much of it that's never been released. We were working on season two when he passed. But in speaking to his close friends and his brother, William, since they never got to hear Alex on Fighters Brew, nor were they even aware he has spent the past year working on it. I'm unlocking all of season one and will be releasing it weekly. After that, I'll unlock every episode of season two until we get to the last recordings of Alex. But rather than Alex being part of an incomplete project, I plan to finish this project and dedicate it to Alex and his family. I'll never be able to fill his shoes but he's already left the blueprint for me to follow, so I'll just follow it just the way he showed me. It's no surprise he didn't tell people about this project. That's Alex. He centers you and rarely makes it about himself, even when he's hurting. This is part of why he had so many aliases. He didn't care if he got all the credit for the kindness he showed others. So many people are now realizing that nice person on the internet was Alex. May he rest in peace and power and be granted all the grace he deserved but never got in this life. I hope you all enjoy Fighters Brew just as much as Alex and I enjoyed making it. It was a lot of fun. We felt like kids again. I know he's proud of our work and I hope that this can stand as a small part of his legacy for his family and friends. In doing Fighters Brew, I was able to capture Alex being Alex, but now everyone else will be able to enjoy Alex as much as I have. I Made This to Stan was a social media account he made just to stan others, but I like to say I'm an Alex stan, and I know there are other Alex stans and more stans to come. I know he'd want this out there, and he'd want me to finish this project and continue with the other projects we discuss, and that's what I'll do. Thanks to all the fans who made this project possible, and I hope you continue to follow Southpaw, which I know ended up becoming a big part of Alex's life. The Southpaw community is about love, compassion, and liberation, and so much of that is the influence of Alex. He put so much of himself into this wacky, nerdy, liberatory martial arts project. It's wild how perfect this project was for Alex, and how Alex was perfect for this project. Fighters Brew is dedicated to Alexander Buckner. Love you and miss you, comrade. 
If you don't already know what Fighters Brew is, it's the newest project from Southpaw and is a recap show of the manga All Rounder Meguru. Check out our introductory episode for more information about All Rounder Meguru and this project. We'll have a link in the show notes. But keep in mind this series takes place in 2008 Japan. If you're part of the Liberation Martial Arts program or a higher Patreon tier, you'll also get transcripts of each episode with pictures and more explanations of the techniques and concepts, along with LMA commentary. Fighters Brew will be a fun and engaging way to learn concepts from our curriculum. Manga has now entered the discourse. All Round Omegaru was created by Hiroki Endo. Fighters Brew is written and produced by Sam. Narrated by Alexander Buckner. <laughs> Fighters Brew, Season 2, Episode 1. Tamaki, Meguru's sister, stares at a sheet of paper in her hand. You want to go to college? I see. She says. And what's this amateur shooto kanto championship? Meguru sits across from her. It's at the end of June, he says, scratching his head. I have to win this tourney to go to the All Japan tourney. And how do you explain these grades on your midterms? She asks. Well, well what? Tamaki stands up. If you score this badly on your finals too, I'll make you quit the gym. What? Meguru cries. Tamaki glares at Meguru. Don't give me that. She shouts. All right, I get it. Meguru is in his room making a pie chart for his day. He's broken up the pie chart into school, sleep, gym practice, study, commute, morning run, bath and dinner, and breakfast. Matches tend to be on Sundays, he says to himself. So should I take Saturdays off? At school, Meguru is mumbling to himself. No, Saturday is the only day I get to devote entirely to practice. If I'm going to rest... I should make it Wednesday. At the gym, Urasawa, Tamiya, and Momoko are observing Meguru's new training dedication. Meguru sure has been sparring with Nabe a lot recently, Urasawa says. Well, if you remember the freshman tournament, Tamiya replies, he got shut down by his opponent's power. Isn't Nabe like 20 kilograms heavier? Momoko asks. Yeah. Tamiya says. But watch how Nabe rolls. He's very controlled. We want to make sure our partners improve. But we must also remember these are our precious friends and not our actual enemies. I never see Nabe get that many submissions. Observes Urasawa. That's because Meguru has a weakness to strength and being pinned. Tamiya says. So his goal right now is to learn to create space and move even while pinned. Watanabe, on the other hand, wants to be a finisher. They're both in a place where they can gain from each other. Watanabe pins Meguru, but Meguru circles his arm to get an underhook. Meguru bridges and turns to grab Watanabe's legs and puts him on his butt. Meguru admires his work, only for Watanabe to reverse and take Meguru's back for the sleeper hold finish. What was that? Meguru asks. A switch. Watanabe answers. Want to try it? Yes! After practice, Meguru rushes home. He devours dinner, takes a bath, and then passes out in the middle of studying. When he wakes up... Seven already? Meguru rushes to put on his school uniform. I don't have time to run. He grabs a snack from the kitchen and runs out the door. Bye! On the train, Meguru reworks his schedule. I guess studying at night is no good. He thinks. In that case... If I go to bed after dinner and get up at four. That evening at the gym, Meguru is sparring Maki. Don't look down, Meguru, Take shouts. Maki yanks his head down and delivers a knee to the body. 
and then tosses Meguru to the mat. Okay, on your feet, Maria tells Meguru. Meguru's been practicing stand-up grappling with Kamiya a lot lately. Yudai tells Furia. Yup, the left mid-kick and clinch. Unless Meguru can overcome that, he can't beat Takashi Yamabuki. Meguru misses with a kick and a punch. Maki answers with a teep to the body. The round ends. Damn, Meguru says. I got my ass kicked. I couldn't land a single blow. You're too easy to read, Maki says. I can see everything you're doing. She's right, Maria interjects. Your kicking form is pretty, but it's too deliberate and dramatic. Maria begins to demonstrate. A big dramatic roundhouse kick with a wide swing has a lot of power, but they're easy to see coming. But in MMA, you want to step in with your foot turned out since you're further away. This also disguises your movement. You also want your kicks to look similar, so your keep, middle, and high kick should all start the same way. You will lose some power, but what's the point of power if you're going to miss? You're also too predictable, Maki says. It's a left hook or a left middle kick. What were you good at in karate? Asks Maria. Oh, now that you mention it, Meguru says, I scored with a middle front punch. A middle front punch? Maki asks. It's a lunging left straight to the body. Maria answers. If you did that to me, Maki begins, I'd knee you in the face. Meguru imagines himself running onto a knee as he middle punches. On his way home, Meguru tries to modify the middle punch for MMA. He practices again before bed. The next day at Fighters Brew, Yudai has Meguru in an arm triangle, but Meguru escapes. Yudai's been big on the arm triangle choke lately, Urasawa observes. You lose position when you mess up an armbar, Furuya tells Urasawa. You can still stay on top if your arm triangle gets broken. Momoko watches and takes mental notes. As Meguru and Yudai fight each other for grips, Meguru grabs Yudai's thigh and executes a switch, taking Yudai's back. Wrestling with Watanabe is paying off. Yudai tries to spin and land on top, but to Yudai's surprise, Meguru transitions to an armbar. It's sunk deep, but Yudai won't give up and spins to escape. Snap! Meguru, Momoko, and Furuya all notice the sound. The round ends. Yudai, Meguru says hesitantly. What? Yudai responds. I heard something tear, says Meguru. It was nothing, Yudai replies as he walks off. Furuya and Momoko both look on. The next day, Meguru and Watanabe are sprinting up outdoor stairs. Watanabe has a short notice fight in Nagoya, to replace an injured fighter. He has two weeks to prepare and get under 77 and a half kilograms. Meguru is struggling to keep up with Watanabe. Nabe-san, Meguru says. Why did you choose to train with me? Because you seem free. Hey, I do have entrance exams, you know. Despite struggling to keep up, Meguru does not give up and tries his best. Even when Watanabe is resting, Meguru persists. He continues to practice his left lunging body punch. A left straight to the body? Watanabe asks. I was thinking, Meguru answers, I might be able to lead into a takedown or left hook with this. I've never landed a right punch in a match, so I'm betting on my left. But if you bend down, they'll just backstep like you're going for a takedown. Try a body jab instead. Okay, Meguru says as he throws a body jab. That evening, back at Fighters Brew, Yudai is in the bathroom, wrapping his right elbow. He throws a few punches and immediately feels a sharp pain. Hooks are fine, Yudai thinks. But I can't throw straights. Yudai puts on a long sleeve compression shirt to hide his injury. The Kanto Championship is in eight days, Yudai thinks. Guess I'll focus on the ground game. As Yudai exits the locker room, he hears Take yell, Get your hands on the inside, Meguru! Meguru's sparring with Maki, 
caught in her double collar tie. As Maki throws a knee, Meguru counters and shoves her off. Take is impressed. He actually used technique rather than brute strength, Maria says. As the sparring continues, Meguru starts to counter Maki. Maki starts to raise the intensity. Don't get too heated, Maria yells. This is supposed to be a light spar. Damn, Maki thinks. When did he learn to counter the left mid kick? I managed to divide her attention with low kicks and jabs, Meguru thinks. Now, if I can only line up my middle punch. Let's just go for it. Meguru throws the jab to the body, but Maki expects a jab to the face and tries to counter with a knee. Don't chicken out, Meguru thinks. My timing's faster. Meguru lands the punch as Maki is stretched out. The knee doesn't land. Meguru follows up with a left hook to the body, but Maki isn't there. Meguru looks down and sees Maki on one knee, holding her stomach. Down, Maria yells. Uh Uh-oh, Meguru, Take says. Meguru is scared. Look what you did, Urasawa says as he points at Maki getting up. Meguru is terrified. Maki gets up slowly like the Undertaker. Hey, Meguru, she says ominously. I thought you said let's go light. But if you want to go all out, that's fine by me. Meguru looks for help, but Urasawa and Take both look elsewhere. As Meguru runs away, Furia steps out of the office holding some papers. The matchups for the Kanto Championship are in, Furia shouts. Yudai, Take, and Urasawa look over the brackets as Maki trounces Meguru. With this lineup, I'll be up against Takashi Yamabuki in the semifinals, Yudai thinks. A bloodied Meguru hangs over the ropes and asks, Hey, you all forgot about me. No, we didn't. You're in here also, Urasawa says. You're a stand-in. Not surprising with the number of applicants, Take says. There's always guys who don't make weight, Urasawa says. So be prepared anyway. Yudai, Furuya says. Come to the office for a sec. Momoko is already in the office. Let me see your right elbow, Furuya tells Yudai. A week later, in Nagoya, Watanabe is heading into the ring for his main event fight. At Meguru's house, Meguru is holding a shirt. My shirt collar is too tight, Meguru tells Tamaki. Can I buy a new one? Again? She says. Yeah, and the seams are digging into my armpit. It's pretty distracting in class. Tamaki pokes Meguru's back. I think your back is getting broader. Back in Nagoya, Watanabe goes for an armbar but ends up on bottom. Calm down, Tamiya yells. Watanabe regains his composure and executes a sweep which turns into a scramble. Watanabe cinches up a gator roll choke as his opponent tries to grab him. Watanabe rolls and tightens. His opponent taps. Watanabe is shocked to get his first submission victory. Back at Meguru's house, Meguru is packing for the Kanto Championship. He gets a text from Tamiya that Watanabe has won. Meguru calls Watanabe. Watanabe is celebrating with his friends and family, but pulls himself away to take the call. Congrats on the win, Meguru says. A gator roll? That's awesome. Meguru, Watanabe says. Yeah? You know, whether I won or lost, I plan to make this my last fight. I told myself I'm not cut off for the pros. I'm beat up and my matches always go to the judges. I feel bad for the people who come to cheer me on every time. It was a lot of pressure. But I think I'll hang on a bit longer. Tonight, I felt really grateful for all my fans and everyone who trained with me. Really, Meguru, thank you. Meguru is lost for words. Trust me. Watanabe continues. You're getting stronger. Go to the championship tomorrow with your chest held high.